Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 219 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we need to upgrade our factory to support our new crystals. Enjoy. The process will be similar to this, honestly, in size as well, not just in design, but it will look something like this. And as far as where to put it, we're kind of running out of space here because the bus is going to come through basically right where these uh, power lines are, so we don't really want to go any lower than this. So if we do build something, we might want to build it kind of at an angle like this, just so it fits in this space. I wanted to leave this area open here, so if we have more puffing that needs to happen in the future, it would just follow this puffer bus and move off to the side here. I wasn't anticipating putting anything down here, so that is a space we can use, or we can... Uh, Maybe jam it in here as well. That's a pretty decent open spot. Some trains may come down here, but probably not. But there is a little bit of space. So when we built this, we didn't have modules and we had slower machines. So between modules and faster machines, hopefully it'll be smaller now. So let's plan to make the crystals and get rid of some of this junk in here. And we don't really know how many we're going to need because that depends on what we start with. Let's just set this to 10 right now, and we'll work our way back. So with these, they're made from each of the shards. We need to polish them. So those are the unpolished versions. They have grindstones and crystal slurry. And probably the only thing we need to check right now, well, I guess we can put the speed modules in, but how many we need might depend on... Uh, the total quantity we just want to make sure there's no productivities in there for now but critically the slurry and the grind wheels already exist here yes they are sized for this but if they're too slow we can always put speed modules in there or something but the grinding wheels are there the crystal slurry is there we don't need to reinvent the grinding wheel we can just uh use this this part of the setup but now we need the crystal shards which are cut from the raw shard. So we can follow that down, make sure there's no productivities. And we'll get crystal powder, but that can be uh, injected back in here like all this other stuff is, it's all interconnected. And then with the raw shards, we have our choice between these two. Number two is much more efficient, where on number one, we have a 40% chance of getting a shard for our fish water in eggshell. But if we add the enhancer, we're guaranteed to get it. So that's definitely better. And no productivities. And here's where we need some new stuff. The eggshell seeds and the crystal enhancers. Well, the eggshell seeds, the petri dishes are here already. Is this number correct? Who knows? Probably not in many ways, but it's already been built. So we'll analyze this after we get everything set up and we know the numbers and we'll upgrade these machines or put speed modules in there uh, if we need to to match the speed here but it's also probably going to be connected by drones and stuff which will add logistics and buffers and make it less susceptible to the speed differences but we'll reuse those dishes since we've already done it and the scale of this isn't going to be insane, so we don't need it to be perfect. But we have our eggshell powder. Check it for those productivities. And then it has milling drums, which is has to process. Then there's our number, our 10, and I think we already calculated our 8.6 or thereabouts. So actually on here, we can just say, as far as the number, we wanted eight. Point six, And those should be some pretty appropriate numbers here. So, since it is, we can go through here and add speed modules, and you can definitely see that uh, it's, it's making these machines quite small, so this setup is probably going to be significantly smaller than what came before it. Okay, those are taken care of. That one's good. And I think we do have actually the ore powderizer too. That was kind of something we researched looking at the uh, cobalt refining, I think. 
So since we can make them, let's add them in. But fortunately, the two modules don't help us. But the one does. Okay, that's our eggshell. So we come back here and take a look at what we've got. Anything that we already have on our base, we don't have to worry about. But any of the new stuff we do. So Crystal Enhancer is something new. So we'll go there. And it's made from Crystal Catalyst. So we'll have to send them up here. And it's going to require some powder as well. And lots of dishes. So there's our setup. We'll want to, before we start building this, make sure that our base is ready to support all this. Since this isn't going to be a unique setup, it's going to be borrowing on what already exists. We want to make sure that we're not uh, forgetting something in our plans here. Because it would suck to build all that and then find out our base is only as fast for like a third of that. So we don't want to get ahead of ourselves in speed, but we need 17.2 Petri dishes. How much does this make? Almost enough, surprisingly. But if this is powering both setups, then we probably want this to be closer to 30 per second. And since that's the limit of our belts, we probably should stick with that. Half of it is being sent here, but then the other half could be diverted perhaps on drone or wherever it goes. I'm just gonna put a belt here to mark that we checked it. We need to double the speed to 30. And what does that do? Well, that does it. <laughs> that does it. Although it's going at a one to one ratio here, so if we increase this speed, we can't quite do it the way we have here. We need to have two separate belts. Let's see here. Yep, they're helping us because they're like, oh no, there's stuff on the ground. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that. Then we need to kind of move this stuff around because... These need to combine. And actually, since one of these goes to one side and one goes to the other, we could actually do something along the lines of these two combining and then going in here. Well, this other side goes somewhere wherever somewhere ends up being. So, if all we did was increase these ones with blues, then presumably all we'd have to do is do the same thing here to get the same results. And it's a bit much, but who cares? It's the same shape as what came before. Are we within the uh, robot zone here? Kind of, but not really. We definitely want to extend this down. Okay, well, how much does a single machine use to see if one inserter is good enough? It looks like it is. Let's see if this is correct as far as output. It looks like it basically is. I know the numbers are a little too high, but if we had 15 on each side, 15 and 15, then they would combine to 30 right there. So that should be good. Just this input part right here would need to be on two separate belts. Because this would have to be 30 items. So that's 15. So if we do all that, it will become approximately 30. Looks like one inserter is enough for all of that. So the question is, do we have enough glass? No, it would need to be red, and then the output would need to be red. And let's use module inserter here. 
just to set this up for quick modules because we don't have any in our inventory right now. Or I guess we do. They, <laughs> the robots dropped them off, so we do now. To an extent, I suppose. And really, we only need to do these upgrades if both modules are running at the same time. And you would kind of expect that to be the case. If we're making one module type, we're making both. So the glass is coming in on red. And then the output is red. But the problem is, is we need to, like, mix them up here. Which is a little tricky, but I think it can be done. Where it comes in is red, has a red splitter, comes in here, and I don't think we need red for that, no. Although we might need a lot more drones than that, but yeah, let's put 10 in there. Basically it would get split, half of it would go this way, of course all these things are now in the way. Then it would get combined to red going that way. This one would come around. Go there. And in for red. So I think that's enough. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to uh, do our due diligence to try, and then we will come back to this later and see how it runs when we're actually making crystals. But we have our output right here and we will decide what we do with it uh, once we know where it's going let's get rid of any junk we have in our inventory before we move along we made sure the petri dishes were good let's check the other things I'm sure lubricant is fine 43 it's gonna have to come from all the way down here Oh, it's plenty. We need 8.6 of these crystal catalysts. We have plenty. Then we need 430 polluted fish water. We have plenty. 51 crystal slurry, which would come from here. That seems like something we're short on. Although this is just getting rid of the dust. It's actually fairly slow. The fast thing would be this right here. Or I guess the powder. Yeah, that would be crystal powder. That's just getting rid of extras. The thing that's mostly doing it is here and it's at 100. Although this is sized for this here. So we'd probably want another one. Although it's just a red belt. So we'd only be able to run so much of it, but that's easy enough that we could run a, a second belt, or I guess we have a second belt already, so maybe like a third one <laughs> running down here. And then the grind wheels, the 8.6. And that's 15, but that's probably because it's doing this side already, so... Um, I would say if we upgraded those grinding wheels as well, we should be pretty good. Okay, and since... Doubling it up seemed to work pretty well so far. We'll do the same here. See what we get. We're good. Well, one potential problem is just a ton of silicon carbide. Is this something that can use productivities? Oh, it is. Well, it's going to make it a lot bigger. But it's also going to cut down on the carbide we need. Let's maybe make this twice as big. Because I think we had 15 grind wheels a second. And we needed to add 8.6. So if we're at 11, then doubling this up should be good. And because of those productivities, we use much less of the silicon carbide now. So we would need 40 in total. 
So let's grab this. Double it, make it approximately the same shape, but we want the belts going down. I'm assuming the numbers are still going to work out. Seems like it probably can change the inserter types. But uh, I don't see the need to optimize to that extent. As long as it's working, we're good. So grab the same thing again. Flip it around to the other side. And get it. And as far as the steel, it looks like we don't need very much of it because of the productivity, so actually that one belt should hopefully be fine for all of this. Although it looks like some of these inserters got reversed. Although I suppose that can be fixed by just uh, moving this belt here. Okay, so we did that. So now we need to increase this to 40 per second. Or 30. It'll just be 40 after all of these upgrades. Yep. Can they get productivities? Nope. So we'll put the modules in. And see what kind of numbers we're dealing with. 40s or 30s for everything. So no combined belts. So we'll grab that. We want to put it back down, but leave two spaces in there. Kind of want to do the same thing for this side. Put it right there. So how much dust would all of this use? 40 or 30 per second, so we need to make sure that's good. Making a red belt, and I'll just put a red belt there to mark that it's in there. And hopefully all of this is good. So let's put our junk in here. So we need to make sure that the dust can come out at 30 per second. And it's definitely being supplied here. If all of this was running we would get our 15. But it also kind of is supplied here as well. And actually that would make the amount too. But let's uh, upgrade it. So in goes faster machine, which does 20. And speed modules gets 36. But we're going to need four inserters to get that. So we can do that and then the input for all of this will be also 18 dust. And we're running out of squares. Well I guess we'll use what we've got for now. If this ran it would need 1.8 drums. That doesn't quite make enough. Now it does. Those inserters are fine. I'll just put some speed modules in there to make sure that's fast enough. Just beef it up. There's going to be a lot of moving parts here we're going to have to check. So we'll just have to do it when it's all running. I'm just trying to do my best to uh, prepare. Okay. Dust is good, but what about the silicon carbide, which we would need quite a bit of it. It looks like we have two belts. And how much does all of this do? Well, that does about 40. 
And that's basically what we need. I guess because of the uh, productivities. So for now, we'll leave it and uh, see how it works. It doesn't have to be perfect, and these numbers are assuming both sides are running at full blast, which won't be the case. This side will only run at full speed if we are doing research. Just for making modules, this is much bigger than it needs to be. It's only this size for the research part, so... Uh, these numbers don't have to be exact, but... Alright, well, we've got the grindstones figured out here. We spent a little time on the slurry. And everything else checks out. So I think we're in a situation where we can actually build it. But that's going to have to wait till the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.